Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap-up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap-up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies. Let's get right into it. Some big shake-ups at DC. This has been the story over the course of the week. Basically what's happening is Warner Brothers is starting to cut costs because of all the uh, COVID-19 shutdowns of theaters, no new movie releases, things like that. They have lost a lot of revenue over at Warner Brothers. We're talking about billions of dollars. So across the board, they're making tons of cuts. Now a lot of people see some of this uh, shrinking of DC Comics as kind of like a death knell for DC print, uh, doing printed comics or, uh, you know, once again, death of the industry type stuff. That's not the case. This is going across the board at Warner Brothers, from Warner Brothers um, production to DC Comics to HBO. It's, it's all across the board. So it's not just DC Comics. So this isn't specific to that, but there are some big changes. Lots of firings, lots of layoffs. Bob Harris... Bobby Chase, Brian Cunningham, Mark Doyle. Surprisingly, Mark Doyle, who's like in charge, the executive editor of DC Black Label, who's been doing a fantastic job. So that kind of sucks. Marie Jovins and Michelle Wells have been promoted to co-editor-in-chiefs. So there's going to be two editor-in-chiefs. One, I think, maybe for the comic book line and one for more graphic novels. I don't know exactly how that breaks down, but Marie Jovins is... A big good friend with Scott Snyder. So this is going to make Scott Snyder kind of happy. Maybe keep him a little bit closer to the main line on DC. Even though he is going to be leaving for a while. Um, Jim Lee is no longer the publisher of the company. But he is going to still be the CCO. Chief Creative Officer. So he still has a prominent role at DC. Just not as publisher. I said this months ago. But I, th I said that I thought that that was going to happen. I've also said that there needs to be an editorial shakeup. Definitely with uh, Bob Harris. So I'm I'm not ever pleased for someone to lose their job, but I am excited to see what Marie J uh, Javins and Michelle Wells will do as the editor in chief. That's kind of neat. They're bringing in somebody from the world of esports to be kind of like a general manager instead of like the publisher role. So there's a lot of shifting and changing going on. They're also canceling a lot of their books. You got to trim the fat, especially when you're losing a lot of money. And like I said, this isn't just specific to DC Comics. This is across the board at Warner Brothers, but they've canceled Hawkman, Young Justice, Aquaman, Suicide Squad, Red Hood, Teen Titans, and maybe even more will be announced as we progress through the coming weeks and months. Now, I will say this, some of these have been canceled, but they will come back. Pretty much guaranteed Aquaman's coming back. It really sucks that Suicide Squad's getting canceled because I just got caught up on that book and it's really good. That's going to end at issue number 11. But a lot of these books were already ramping up to be ending to make way for 5G. Now that 5G is no longer really happening, we'll see what they start doing after that. But the comic book publishing line is going to be shrinked. And here's the start of it right here. Also, DC Universe, that's right. All DC Universe streaming shows, all the original shows, they're going to move over to HBO Max. DC Universe is probably just going to maintain being like a comic book. Um, I think they're going to keep the comic books on there and the community stuff. So it's going to be more like the Marvel Universe app where it's just about the comic books and not so much about original film TV content. Um, so there you go, right? John Ridley's The Other Side of the DC Universe, or The Other Side of DC History, or The Other History of the DC Universe, I should say. Um, that was announced a long time ago when they first announced DC Black Label. It's actually going to see print. It releases this upcoming November. Speaking of John Ridley, his Batman book, which was going to be the Batman 5G book, the one with Luke Fox as Batman, that's... It's not been officially announced or anything, but Jim Lee did say that John Ridley has a Batman miniseries that's going to reverberate and have major repercussions for the entire Batman line. So it basically seems like they're taking John Ridley's work for what would have been Batman 5G and turning it into a miniseries. I think we're going to be seeing this a lot with some of the 5G type stuff now that that's no longer happening. Punchline is getting her own 48-page one-shot in November. It's going to be written by James Tiny IV, of course, and Sam Johns. It's going to have artwork by Mirka and Dolfo, a very 
fan favorite artist right now, but this is going to be elaborating a little bit more on Punchline's origins, her motivations, and set up what's to come for that character in the near future. Um, Tiny and promises that there are big things to come for the character. She's super popular, so why not? I'm excited to get more into the uh, origins and motivations of the character because so far, so good. I'm really liking the character. Death Metal's got two new tie-ins coming in November. We have Infinite Hour Extreme. Oh, man. This is a Lobo-centric book. It's going to be like about a Lobo telling different tales from his history or the history of the DC multiverse or something like that. I don't care. It just sounds awesome. Infinite Hour Extreme. I am so freaking pumped. I'm having so much fun with Death Metal. It's going to have work from Frank Thierry, Becky Cloonan, amongst others, Dell Inglesham. So really excited for that one. They also have announced The Multiverse Who Laughs. Um, yeah, The Multiverse Who Laughs. It looks like the Batman Who Laughs is remaking The Multiverse in his image, and this is going to be a series of short stories in this one shot that are going to reveal what some of these worlds are, including an evil world with nothing but super pets. Okay, I'm cool with that. It's got work from Scott Snyder, James Tiny in the Fourth, Josh Williamson, Amanda Connor, and Patton Oswalt. Hell yeah. Super excited for this. I'm having so much fun with Death Metal, so of course I am pumped. Sweet Tooth, The Returns, the six-issue series from DC Black Label starting in November, written and illustrated by Jeff Lemire. That's right. Sweet Tooth is going to be now... Is it a movie or TV show? I think it's a TV show produced by Robert Downey Jr. Um, so since it's going to be out there, they're bringing it back. So Jeff Lemire gets to write and illustrate a six-issue Sweet Tooth The Return miniseries. That starts in November. Very excited for that. Gideon Falls, speaking of Jeff Lemire, Gideon Falls is wrapping up an ending in November with issue number 27, which is going to be an 80-page finale. I am always sad to see one of my favorite comic books go go away, but it's ending. This is, if you read Gideon Falls issue to issue, and I've been saying it on the weekly comic book review, it feels like we're nearing the end of this story. It feels like we're hitting a climax, a climactic moment, and it's happening. 80-page finale with Andrea Sorrentino's artwork, with Dave Stewart's coloring, Jeff Lemire. Gideon Falls has been one of the best books of the last three years, 100%, if not the best, so I'm excited. I am sad to see it end, but I'm also excited to see what the end is going to be. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin has been delayed, and it's also replaced one of the artists. Wow, it seems like there's going to be some problems here. Um, it's been delayed out to October 28th, so you're not going to see it for a little bit longer. Um, Andy Kuhn, I think was his name, or Kun, something like that. Um, it seems like a lot of people didn't respond so well to the artwork in that Ashcan preview that was released. So they've actually pulled him off the book, brought in some other artists to work with Kevin Eastman, and it looks like they're going to redo some of the artwork, and that's probably one of the reasons for the delay. It's also going to be a bi-monthly book. So the first issue's in October, second issue's in December, next issue's in February, and so on and so forth. Um, Books of Blood. There's a Books of Blood movie debuting October 7th on Hulu. That's right, the Books of Blood, the Clive Barker sh uh, series of stories, Really, really excited for this. I'm a big Clyde Barker fan, and I'm pumped to see what they do. It was originally going to be um, a TV series, but they decided just to do it as a movie, an anthology movie. It's going to be a bunch of different short stories based on that Clyde Barker work. And they are remaking Three Men and a Baby for Disney+. Plus. Why? Because they got Zac Efron on board. Okay, why not? I'll be honest with you. When I was younger, Three Men and a Baby was one of my favorite movies. First of all, I was a huge Ted Danson fan. Loved Ted Danson. I was into Cheers like crazy, and Steve Gutenberg, of course, Police Academy, Tom Selleck, come on, Magnum P.I. I loved Three Men and a Baby, so is it necessary to do a reboot? Probably not, but it's got Zac Efron in it, so we'll see what happens, who else they cast, that's going to be on Disney+. Plus. So that's what we got for you this week, what's coming up here at Pop Culture Philosophers, all the usual fare, but tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, join us for Rockin' Robbie Live. We'll be talking more about the DC news and all of it, we'll break it down and we'll talk more in depth about what's exactly happening at DC and how that's going to lead into the future of DC. Um, we'll be talking about my top five my favorite John Hughes films. We just did a John Hughes PCP Army movie poll, the winner of which was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hope you checked out that live movie review. If not, check it out on the replay. We had a lot of fun talking about that film. Also tonight, the return of Marvel 
in the 90s. So you don't want to miss it. We're going to have a fun live time tonight on Rockin' Robbie Live, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment below on anything you want to talk about, about what's going on in the industries right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do check us out at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts, blogs, and a whole lot more. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on living, y'all.